You know, I just spent a couple hours today. Hey, how you doing? Running around with a realtor, checking out a number of properties in our area. I actually went to three different ones, all probably within about a half hour from where we live right now. And um, it's interesting, I mean, knowing what goes into even getting a raw property to where we have this one, to look at that raw land and consider the, the potentials. Um, they were all about 20 acres or less, and they all had a certain slope to them. It's the Ozarks. But, it was an enjoyable experience for me. I was heading out in the woods and checking out different things. Being out in the wild is always something I enjoy. And to look through all these different properties, especially now that I've been in this area for a while, and I can understand kind of some of the benefits of various trees, various undergrowth, various plants that you could encounter. It's, I think I'm much more ready to uh, kind of give an honest evaluation of a property that makes sense than, than when I first moved here five years ago. There was definitely um, a lot of really useful trees and bushes. One of them, it was like 20 acres and the whole understory of the forest was wild blueberries to a degree that I've never seen before. I've encountered a patch here or there or seen some different stuff, but to see that many was absolutely insane. I can't imagine what it's like at the end of summer or in the fall. It must be fantastic. In fact, the realtor I was with, he actually found a shed from a 10 point buck. So it was, you know, five horns on one antler um, or five, what, tines maybe? But um, he found that on that property and uh, you know, saw some sassafras, some persimmon, some wild plums, a lot of different things. And it was interesting too, just looking at kind of how remote some of the locations were, but then also how some of them really had some interesting neighbors that I'm not sure if it's the type of stuff you'd want to just move to and, and sit there and expose yourself or your family to just based on the way that properties are kept up. Um, one of them on a, on a rustic scale of zero to you know 10 it was definitely like an 8 out of 10 on the rustic scale and some of the things it really makes you wonder about who you'd be living next door to. How you doing sheep? So some of you may be wondering you know are we moving? Are we giving up on this homestead and starting fresh somewhere else, settle down, I have nothing for you. The answer to that is no. Um, we don't have any plans at the moment of, of leaving here. As far as we know, this may be our forever home. I mentioned that in our uh, 10 questions for every homesteader video that I did. Um, but if for some reason we get called to leave here, you know, it's definitely an option that we would look into. We were actually looking at these different properties for some friends of ours. Um, they're considering moving to the area. We know quite a few families who are actually considering moving to the area. You know, some from Missouri, some from Texas, some from up in Michigan, other places that are seriously considering, you know, a relocation here. And that kind of brings me to the point of this video, which is, you know, are we even free to move? So even that question of, are we free to move, would really sound preposterous to many people just a couple of months ago. But at this current day and age, and in the state of affairs that we're living in, it actually becomes a valid question. It would be like asking, you know, are you free to travel? Well, there's some places where the way I understand it, you're not free to travel. Where you cannot drive through certain states without uh, facing some issues because of some of the local travel bans, I guess, that are going on. And as I was discussing with my friend, 
You see, it makes sense for somebody who's a half an hour away from a property to go and look at it if he's got the free time and the desire to help somebody, the willingness to do it, as opposed to having somebody drive like eight hours. Actually, no, it'd be more like 12 hours. Having somebody drive 12 hours one way just to look at it and then drive, you know, 12 hours back. It makes more sense for me to do that and to save him that time and effort anyway if I'm willing to do it, and I certainly am. But at the moment, I don't think he could even really get away with coming down here to look at some properties. And the thing that really interested me from the conversation that I had with him is he mentioned that at the moment, he can't even legally sell his house. Now that's hearsay. I didn't hear that firsthand, you know. That's what he told me. But it's peculiar to think about somebody not being able to legally sell their house right now. So I don't know about you guys, but I definitely saw a certain degree of the writing on the wall some years ago of just the frailty of the society that we live in and the way things are structured and really how easy it is to overwhelm some of the, I don't know even know if you could call them fail safes that we have in place. But there doesn't need to be that big of an outbreak to overwhelm, actually overwhelm, you know, the medical people. There doesn't need to be that big of a um, kind of uprising or riot or whatever you want to call it to overwhelm local police departments. There's a lot of interesting things like with the freedom of travel or the freedom of the right, you know, to assemble and different things that, that come into play in a situation like this. And it's a lot of, you know, you don't know which way to turn, which way you're free to turn, what things that would normally just be considered okay, like geographically relocating your family, even to somewhere you consider to be safer, maybe than where you're living and having that suddenly become illegal. And if that's the case, we don't know globally if things are going to get worse or if they're going to get better. In a lot of ways, we don't even know how, how bad they are. If, if somebody's warning me to stay away from people who are sick, the same time they're warning me that people can be transmitting things up to two weeks before they show any signs, how does that information really do me any good? Um, I should stay away from people that are healthy, right? And we actually chose to, okay, we have no idea what's going on. Um, I travel a lot for work and there's a lot of things that can happen like a governor or somebody declaring that something's locked down. Well, if we get locked down somewhere or put in some sort of mandatory quarantine or other things, I would much rather do it on my property with my family than leave my wife and children here and be you know, hundreds of miles away or in another state. And that was kind of the part of it that I didn't trust. I didn't want to leave and wind up hours away and get kind of trapped in some sort of shutdown, some sort of um, restriction, some sort of quarantine. So for three weeks, we pretty much had no contact with anyone. We shut down a lot of things we were doing. I stocked up on, you know, some of the food that we had, but we're getting a lot of stuff from the wild here too. And we didn't go shopping. We didn't go to the post office. We didn't go to the gas station. We didn't go anywhere. Um, even some of our neighbors, we talked <laughs> to them where they're on the street and we're on the, um, on our property on the other side of a fence. Now, if everyone would have been able to do that for three weeks, much less two, then everyone at this point would either be ill or safe. But even with some of the stuff going on, you can't have essential or mandatory or required workers running around doing things at the same time you're having people quarantined or something and expect it to work. So I guess the main point of this video is just kind of doing a checkup, kind of getting a reading, um, throwing out some sort of sensor. Um, what is and isn't allowed in your area? You know, here, 
people are still doing a certain number of things. Um, I know some states, they really shut down, like Illinois, I guess, shut down all of the Illinois DNR, Department of Natural Resources, or whatever it's called there. Um, the lakes and boat landings and parks and stuff that were operated by them. So in some places it's illegal to go fishing. I know that when initially when Texas sent some things out, they considered hunting and fishing still to be essential activities. And to me, especially when you look at like something like hunting or fishing, you are so far away from everyone. Like if you're still allowed to go to Walmart and bump into, or try not to bump into, you know, 50 or 100 or more other people, how are you not allowed to be in the woods by yourself or on a boat by yourself? To me, it's much safer for me. And I thought of this just the other day when I was catching some fish out of the local lake, I went by myself and I was there by myself and I didn't encounter anyone the whole time. I did catch some fish, but I was thinking, you know, I can run here and pick up food without encountering anyone. And I can easily have dozens or more of trips of gasoline left in the truck off of, you know, a tank. So it's not like I need to drive hundreds and hundreds of miles to, to go fishing. Although I guess somebody in Britain somewhere recently took a, a 200 mile fishing trip and they got like the whole family got arrested for it or something, I guess. I don't know. But I would consider that to be much safer than me going to a Walmart or a Dollar General or a grocery store and standing in a line, even if we're all spaced out, we're all interacting less than six feet away from the same, you know, cashier. I don't know. So here, I guess we can still fish. I guess we can still look at properties. I don't know if we can move to them or close on them. Um, I don't know if we can sell properties. As far as I know, I can still head places and pick up seeds in person rather than order them off the internet. Um, but I also heard that some places it's illegal to buy seeds, garden seeds, where, you know, you're enriched white bread, as I talked about in a previous video, you, that's an essential. It's important for you to get this bread that, you know, you can have for a week and then you're gone, but it's not important for you to be able to plant a seed, maybe even let some of it go to seed and never need to buy that seed again. Um, just interesting to consider. So if I had to give advice right now, which I'm not saying I'm one to give advice, I'm not saying I have to, but if I had to, I would suggest that people do what they can where they're at. I don't know what the actual situations are. I don't know what the actual numbers are on things. And I don't know how this is all gonna pan out. I don't know if it will pan out. I know we all hope it'll get better, but I also know that we would all hope that this didn't happen in the first place. Yet, something's going on at multiple levels. One is a health risk, and then another one is just kind of with the powers that be, the governments down here, what is the right level of them to interact in this stuff? What is the risk of them overreacting to a detrimental effect? And what is the you know, probability of them underreacting to a detrimental effect. We can't rely on others to keep us safe in the end. Yeah, there's gonna be a couple security nets or things that are set up to protect us to a degree. You know, that's one reason my whole property here is fenced in with hog, or sorry, cattle panel. Because I have a, a barrier, I have a level of defense that I want. I've seen wild hogs down that way I've seen wild hogs down that way. The neighbors have seen them up here and they've been on the property across the street too. So at one time or another, we've pretty much been surrounded by wild hogs. They can be beasts to be reckoned with at any day. I could send my children out to do chores in the morning because a lot of it they do themselves. Um, they wake up, they do their chores, they have their breakfast, we do our devotions, then they go about their schooling, I go about my business, we, we work on things, but uh, I could send them out any morning to do their chores and they could meet a pack of 20, 30 wild hogs. That wouldn't work out well for them. So because I know there's a risk, I've set up a hedge of protection and it should work pretty good. I'm gonna do a couple other things too, but ultimately I can't rely on somebody else to keep my family safe and there's only a certain level that I can do myself. Sure, we self-quarantined for three weeks. That was above and beyond anything that was recommended. We didn't come close to anyone during that time. 
I didn't work, we didn't leave, we didn't really do nothing. But all I need to do is to interact with one person right now who didn't do that. And supposedly we could all be infected, you know? Supposedly all of our lives could be in jeopardy. I don't know. But there's a risk. And I don't know if we've still got a long way to dig in and get through this, or if there's a light at the end of the tunnel that's near. I can't answer that at all. But what I can do is be there to help. And I can do what I can. So on this channel, just like in our life, we're going to continue to be as self-sufficient as possible. We're going to take as many things into our own hands to benefit ourselves and others as we're, we're able to. On this property already, a lot of things have come in from a variety of people that are now growing in our garden, that are now here, having a positive influence on our life. And there's a lot of things that have gone out from this property in seeds and in plants and in other things to bless others. You know, I don't think it's a small thing to be able to go hang out with somebody like uh, Jeff from Bobblehead Homestead and plant things in his garden. Plant him a little bit of a start of a food forest. You know, he's a friend of mine I met years ago. I appreciate the opportunity to go hang out with him and I love to be able to leave a place better than it was when, when we got there. No matter where it is, if I work for a company, I want it to be better because I was there. If I attend a fellowship, I want it to be better because we were there. If I, if I set foot on somebody's property, I don't want to be a curse, I want to be a blessing. And I think that we each, even in this property, part of the goal was to set ourselves up to take care of ourselves and others if need be. I think that we each need to have that um, mentality that we should be willing to do what we can you plan for the worst, you hope for the best, you wind up somewhere in between, and you try to have as, as much of a positive influence on others as you possibly can. Looks like the camera is not appreciating the low lighting, but had a good time checking out some properties today. Hopefully it'll bless our friends. We'll see what's able to happen with them. And um, yeah, stay safe, people. Be wise. Papa out.